This lens is pretty damn small. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Sam and today we are looking at this. This is the 25mm f1.4 C mount lens. Now I've adapted this for Micro Four Thirds and it should work for any mirrorless camera, um, although the actual covering of the lens uh, is only around about a Micro Four Thirds size, so if you're using full frame or APS-C you will have to use something like uh, clear image zoom or X tele depending on what kind of system you're using or you'll just have to crop and post uh, because it won't cover that much more than Micro Four Thirds without a bit of vignetting around the side. So I bought this lens for around about £17 well over a year ago now on eBay but I haven't used it all that much and I will explain why that is later in the video um, but first I'm just going to show you what it looks like uh, on a regular size camera. So I've got my GH4 here. So yes, as you can see here it does look kind of comically small. Uh, you will get some weird looks if you use this one in public. Uh, but I think that's part of the charm. You know, the, the C-Mountain lenses are all pretty tiny and they are all pretty portable. But uh, yeah, it certainly um, does look interesting on like a regular size camera. So before we get to the main review of this video and the pros and cons and everything, I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of the specs and the dimensions of the lens. So it's four centimeters long and three centimeters wide. Now I know there's probably plenty of jokes to be made uh, that are, let's say, inappropriate. So I'm just gonna gloss over that and uh, move on to the next bit. So this is a 25 millimeter prime lens. Uh, it goes from f1.4 to f8, but it actually also closes all the way down. So you can actually make it darker than f8, but that's what's marked on here. So there aren't actually any markings on the focus ring. Uh, it just says near and far. And weirdly, the focus ring is behind the aperture ring. I, I don't know why that is. I think it's probably something to do with its size and the way it's built, but it's just something to note. It's not what you'd usually expect on any kind of lens. So as I mentioned, it's also a C-mount lens, which uses a screw system. Now C-mount has quite a small flange distance so it doesn't it wouldn't work with DSLRs because the distance that it has to be from the sensor is quite long but with mirrorless the flange distance is around the same so with Sony cameras and Lumix cameras the flange distance is around the same so you can actually adapt these but yes if you're trying to use this on one of the Canon or Nikon DSLRs I'm afraid these won't work. So this is also built of metal which does give it a surprisingly premium feel and uh, it does feel largely pretty well built. So the pros, what do I like about this lens? As I said, it does have quite a premium feel. Uh, it doesn't feel as cheap as it is. It certainly doesn't feel like, you know, a hundred pound or 200 pound or a thousand pound lens, but it certainly feels like it's worth more than the 17 pounds I paid for it. And speaking of price, I mean, 17 pounds is pretty incredible for any kind of lens, whether it's secondhand or brand new. That is, that is pretty cool. Cause this, this was brand new. This wasn't secondhand. Um, and I would ex I would have expected to pay, just looking at it and just the build quality, I would have expected to pay 40, 50 pounds for something of this build quality. It does also produce some pretty nice background blur, bokeh. Uh, it's very smooth, feels quite organic, and it's it's got an interesting look to it, quite a unique look. And I'd say portraits and close-ups are where it shines. That's where, you know, it really looks quite nice and quite artistic, and you probably could use it uh, in those situations you know, that's where it would really do its do its best. And lastly, it is tiny, so it is super portable. I could shove this in my trouser pocket or in one of my camera pouches. Just sort of throw it in there. You're not, you can't really complain about not having enough space because this takes up no space at all. I often actually even bring this along to weddings. I've never used it on weddings and I'll get into that again a bit more in a bit. Uh, but you know, you could, you could bring this anywhere. And if you suddenly, if suddenly the inspiration hits you or reaches you, then yeah, you could use it for, uh, well, just have it there. Best to have it than not, I suppose. But now we get on to the cons and there's some pretty big flaws with this lens. And unfortunately, of all the lens reviews I've done, this is the first one where I'm unfortunately gonna have to be quite negative about it. I don't like being negative about, you know, the camera equipment I use and that I bought, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that make this quite, difficult to use. So firstly, as I mentioned at the start, the positioning of the focus ring and the aperture ring are in the wrong place. I don't know why that is. I, I mean, well, I did say I think it's down to the manufacturer, but the thing is there is um, a 25 millimeter f1.8 C-mount lens, which I've done a review on, uh, that doesn't have that. And so I, I have to question why that is. I suppose this is built for CCTV cameras and not for you know, mirrorless or filmmaking, but even then, a lens is a lens, so it does surprise me that this doesn't, 
you know, obey the standard conventions of lens design. And again with that one, the lack of focal markings that just say near and far, it I don't get why that is. Why not have at least some basic, you know, markings? I mean, it does have a pretty good, you know, focus throw, about 180 degrees, which I've always, actually no, it's more than that. It's a little over 180 degrees, which I have said in previous videos is kind of the sweet spot for me. And I will say on the uh, 25 f1.8, the focus throw is only about a quarter rotation. So that is something that's pretty good. But, you know, it doesn't really make up for the fact that it just says near and far and you kind of have to guess. And the other thing I will say as far as the whole focusing thing, with this being positioned behind it, I do find it's quite difficult to pull focus. I find it's, I, I'm, I'm often hitting the aperture ring, just because I'm kind of, you know, it's not very big, and obviously it's a tiny lens, so you kind of find yourself doing that, and it just doesn't, it doesn't work as well, and trying to do, get a good focus pull isn't very effective with this lens, which is really a real shame, especially, you know, if you're trying to go from all the way from distance, you know, right to something in the foreground, I, I've yet to be able to get a good smooth focus transition. So this next thing may be down to the quality of the actual adapter. It doesn't fully tighten, there's always a little bit of give. And I've found that when I'm doing focus pulls or changing the aperture, the amount of times it's just, it's just come off or come loose. No matter how hard I tighten it, it just doesn't fully tighten up, which is really infuriating and I keep worrying that it's gonna actually fall off. So yeah, that's, that's not great. It does appear to have some kind of filter thread, I think. But I don't think it's a standard type. I've certainly not been able to find... I bought a couple of step-up rings and I've yet to find something that fits it. So it does mean that I can't use my ND filter with it. And if I want to shoot wide open, obviously I have to crank the shutter speed as fast as it will go. I have to drop the ISO to the extended range, which is 100, which is does mean you then lose some dynamic range. And I still find it's too bright, so I then have to drop the aperture so I can see some of the clouds. So that's not ideal. I'd love to be able to, I mean really I suppose I could get a matte box but I like a variable ND filter so that's kind of that's kind of annoying that I can't do that. So the next point is that you can't get all that close to a subject. I'd say you can maybe get within two feet, possibly one and a half feet before things start going out of focus which isn't great. Um, if you want to do macro shots there are a lot of these things do come with macro extension tubes but then you can't then focus to distance so it, it's it's annoying. Um, again, cheap lens, can't really expect too much, but I would have thought I could get a little closer with something like this. But the main point is actually the image and you know what's actually being shot. And I've got to say, not great. So I'm going to switch over to this lens now so you can see what it looks like in a studio setting and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So here we go, we now have switched to the 25mm f1.4. I'm actually wide open right now, I've had to drop the ISO to 100, I think we're still a bit overexposed here. I'm just going to make sure I'm actually in focus here. I'm using my using the app here at the moment, um, there you go, just, just to see because obviously I don't have um, touch to focus and it's quite a razor thin margin actually. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is this is what it looks like. And the first thing you'll notice is, look, if I move over here, out of focus. Here, in focus, here, out of focus. We have this tiny little vignette, an area of space where I'm in focus. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of, it's almost like having a migraine or maybe a form of tunnel vision. I know tunnel vision is slightly different than that, but it's kind of got that vibe to it, which is weird and I don't I don't really get it. The other thing as well as far as the focus goes, look if I move here, so it seems to have two different focal points. You'll see this in some of the examples as well. I, I don't know why that is. Again it's just to do with the way the lens is made but it surprises me that it the, the vignette is that bad because again on, on this on this 37 millimeter you get vignetting but it's not as bad as this. Um, and again, the 25mm f1.8 doesn't have this problem, so I'm really confused as to why it's like this. I just don't see this as being usable. I, I couldn't use this a lot for interviews or portrait stuff. You know, I might be able to use this for something like artistic or something, I'll get back to that later. But for professional work, no, I couldn't use this, not really. Um, which is a shame, because it's a, it's a cool lens in theory. An f1.4, great, but, you know, this amount of side blur that's just a vignette, it's just not great. Anyway, I'm gonna switch back over now and do the rest of the review with an all lens because I don't wanna keep having to kind of move in and out of focus. But yeah, that's kind of what it looks like in a studio setting. So, back to the new lens. 
Okay, and we are now back on my normal lens. Thank goodness, I can move around. Also, hang on, let me just adjust my seat as well. So I had to, I had to sit down. The way I've got my, um, the way I've got this whole thing positioned, uh, yeah, I had to lower my seat. So yeah, it was quite difficult, and I kept going out of focus. So yeah, it's nice to be back on this lens. So yeah, I think I was, I was pretty harsh on this, but I think it was fair enough. I know it's only a seventeen pound lens, and I'll, make, I'll talk about that again in a bit. Um, but compared to this this 35 millimeter, this is just so disappointing. Um, you know, they're around about the same price. This one, again, it's got some vignetting, sure, but just the image you get is really cool. I'm pretty sure it's about a 35 millimeter filter thread, so I can attach an ND filter. I haven't got one yet, but I can do. But this, yeah, this just, I mean, they've both got, you know, they're very similar builds. It's, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a similar company, if not the same, but this one just, Missed the mark completely, um, and again, as I as I mentioned, that twenty five millimeter f one point eight that we we gave to Dan is great. You know, there were there was some issues with it, like I had to glue it to the um, adapter, but yeah, I don't I don't see why um, this one just missed the mark so badly. And I've just forgot to mention that I did reviews on this 35mm and the 25mm f1.8, both the C-mount lenses. The links are in the description if you do want to watch those after the video. So what I will say though is despite the fact I've been pretty harsh on this, there are some good points to it and there are certain instances that I would use this. I would say this is quite a niche lens. This isn't going to be something that you use for everything, but there are, yeah, so there are some instances where actually it could be quite cool to use it. So the thing that I think it would be best for would be if I wanted to do something where someone's maybe hallucinating or maybe there's something going on in their head that you kind of want to illustrate a bit more, you know, the music video or the narrative video. This could be quite cool. But yeah, in most situations, I just I just couldn't use it. However, for seventeen pounds, and this is the thing, I did enjoy. To, I'd, I'd shot some stuff today. I quite enjoyed using it, like for what it was. So actually, if you do enjoy experimenting with weird lenses, you can't really go wrong for seventeen quid. Like you will get good build quality, and you know you will get good bokeh and shallow depth of field. So yeah, if it's something that you want to just experiment with, I'd give it a go because 17 quid, I mean, come on. But if you're wanting something that you might actually be able to use, let's say in a professional environment, you're better off spending a couple more quid and going for the 25mm f1.8 or this 37mm f1.7. So thank you very much everyone for watching this one. I hope you did enjoy and a big thanks to Sarah Cook for editing the video. So please like and subscribe if you did enjoy and obviously make sure to have notifications on. If there are any low cost lenses you would like us to review, just leave us a comment down below. So we post videos every Friday slash Saturday, so watch out for that and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.